Take it up. Oh my god! No, no, nah, come on, man. Yes, yes, yes. Because I wanted it all on me, not like trying to be like all like full of myself, but that's just uh, the vibe I was. You're the guest. It's all about me. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Wait, we'll leave it like this. You record right now as we speak. I've been recording. You've been recording. Oh, look at that. We got that's called that's called raw material, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was the BTS material. <laughs> Beyond the Views podcast. This is your boy Sito, episode seven. Episode seven. We have an important guest with us here tonight. It is about one a.m. It's about one a.m. And we're about to get started with episode seven. I got Kevin. Kevin, thank you so much, bro, for coming on the show. Um, I'm excited. I can't wait to have uh, this conversation with you. Uh, for the viewers to get to know you, magician, um, give me some insights. Who is Kevin? They, well, thank you for the big introduction. And you know what? I don't know if you did this stylistically, <laughs> but episode seven with Kevin. Viewers got to know this guy's got some smarts, man. So it was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> so who is Kevin? Well, yeah. I don't even know. No, I'm... I am a uh, mentalist. So uh, it's like a magician, but it creates a mentalist creates the illusion of mind reading. So like a magician, but using the mind. So I go by, if you go on my website, my social media is mentalist and psychological illusionist, because I want people to genuinely know illusionist. It's not real. Nobody can read minds. I genuinely like a lot of my videos. You'll see, look at me, say it in your head. It's an illusion of mind reading, mind reading in itself. Not real. All of yours now are like, Sito, we need a we need a refund. What is this guy? That's where you expertise mentalism. Yes, uh, like I, I started in magic. I started when I was a young kid. I was walking Listen. down the street. I got I got um, you got time. I got bit by an alien. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> where Kevin started. So give me the journey of where you started, um, and you know how this came to blossom to where you at now. Day one, my dad. My dad is the biggest, absolute biggest inspiration in this. He is the reason I'm doing this. 100%. 100% is my father. So he always loved magic. Always. Since my mom and uh, my dad were dating and yeah. then they got married before I was born, he was always a fan of magic. And he would watch David Blaine. Um, 1997 Contents. My guy. Birth to Mr. Kevin Hamden. Okay. And mm -hmm. that was the same year... Um, my dad was always watching the ma magic and all that, all the episodes, yeah. um, anything out. Let's fast forward. I get older. I'm three, four years old. My dad's watching street magic, David Blaine street magic. Yeah. I, all I remember, I vaguely, like I, I, I obviously I watched it again later, but at that age, I just remember this man flying. I was three years old. It's the, all I can remember is just a guy flying and I remember we were in my, my, my first house. I, that's all I remember. I don't even remember anything else. The guy was flying, but it intrigued me. I remember. Yep. And uh, let's fast forward now. I turned seven. So my dad learned some card tricks and he showed me. Destroyed me completely. So it started with seeing David Blaine. David Blaine's huge inspiration in terms of someone in the field that I look up to. Yeah. But my father is the reason... I'm into this. So he showed me magic tricks, showed me the stuff, blew my mind, wouldn't tell me how it was done. Fast forward a few months later, Chris Angel comes on TV, Chris Angel Mind Freak. Angels. Yes. So me and my dad would always watch it. It was every Wednesday and then they moved it to Tuesdays, but it was on uh, A&E. That, that was the channel. I, we watched everything religiously. My dad would always put it on and I would be watching it. I would, I would never miss it. Seven years old. I did not know any of this was possible. I'd watch it and say, oh my God, my dad can do magic. This guy can do magic. What can I do? Chris <laughs> Angel started teaching tricks. Yeah, I was, I was like, oh my God, this is, what is going on? This That's is awesome. crazy. Yeah. Chris Angel started teaching, <laughs> Chris Angel started teaching tricks on his show. A floating water bottle. It's on YouTube. Uh, not water bottle, uh, cup, the water cups. He made it float and he showed it. I was like, oh my God, I got to show this to everybody. Wow. I did it. 
nobody was fooled. Nobody was sold. Everyone's like, this, this guy's not making anything happen. Yeah, yeah. So my dad's like, you know what? I'll teach you the card trick. Bam. I started learning. I learned it. And I was like, holy crap, this is really cool. Fast forward again. How old are you, How old are you at this point? Seven. Still when I was seven. Seven, to just turning eight. Okay. But all I could pretty much know was whatever Chris Angel taught and that card trick. Let's fast forward now till grade, grade eight. I would be, let's see the math. Grade eight, grade eight, grade eight, 13? Bingo, bango, 13. 13. 13 years old. I had a friend in my class and uh, he got the Chris Angel magic kit. And I heard that. I was like, oh my God, the Chris Angel magic kit. Because my dad would not he's not one to buy things online with his credit card. And that was the only way to get it. So I was like, Oh my God, I can't get this. I was like, Oh no. I love that shit. I love this <laughs> fucking like, you know, those cases where it shuffled for you and it came with some dices of fucked up cards. It was empty, clear. I love that shit. I remember buying that shit. Continue. Yeah, that was, but this Chris Angel one was the best thing I've ever seen. So my friend had it and I went to his house. I saw it. I was like, Holy crap. No, sorry. I left out a part. Before this, I was YouTubing now because now YouTube, I was getting onto YouTube and I was learning card tricks there. I would be on YouTube, I think maybe 10 hours a day. And I'm not even joking. Wow. I would be sitting there on my dad's computer, just watching YouTube videos, trying to learn. There was Disturb Reality. That was a YouTube channel. There was another guy named Jason Magic. All those guys I was watching, I'm like, holy crap. I'm now learning how to do magic. But mentalism was something that was never really taught. The mentalism that you saw on TV. Yeah. I, I, at that point in my life, all that mentalism was just fake. Because I was like, there's no way. I, I'm seeing what's on YouTube. I didn't know there was places to learn. Um, Chris Angel kit comes and my friend has it. I go to his house. I've researched everything. I've seen it. I'm like, let me see this. I saw it and I'm like, dude, this is amazing. I, I need this. I need this. My dad won't, won't put his credit card online. And he's like, okay, Kevin, I'll sell it to you. I'll sell it to you. And I'm like, yeah, how much? He's like 20 bucks. I'm like 20 bucks. This thing's 120 bucks. Long. He's like, yeah, 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 you're a friend. Don't worry. 20 bucks in grade eight. I bought it. Cito, I bought it and I devoured that thing. Five months. I was doing just magic. I was doing all those wow. magic tricks. I was so into it, but no no mentalism, no real mentalism. No, I shouldn't say real. Cause what I mean by real is that stuff you see on TV. Yeah. Mentalism is that's a, that's a, that's a thing. Mentalism is the illusion of mind reading. So technically mentalism is real because you are creating the illusion of mind reading, right? But mind reading is not real. So what I mean, real, the stuff you see on yeah, TV. Yeah. I got you. So then I started reading books and I started seeing that all the psychology, all the the mentalism tricks and everything was found in these books. And I dedicated my life every day, reading, 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 reading. And then, you know, I believe in God, man. I believe in blessings and a blessing happened to me when I was starting to read these books is I became friends. I saw in my area, there was a mentalist named Bobby Mata and I went to go see a show. Unbelievable. In that moment, I was like, holy shit. That's, wow. that's it. This guy's got it. This is the most entertaining performer I have seen. I went back to the show again and uh, we chatted. We had a chat and after we chatted about half an hour, he's, he thought like, wow, you know, this guy knows his stuff. This guy's learning a lot. He asked me, you want to work with me? I said, sure. Wow. So I did ticket sales for him. Yeah, I did ticket sales and then I did some, uh, some stage help for him with uh, like helping on the stage and all that moving stuff, setting stuff up. And we became close. And I continued in that whole time reading, 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 reading. So wow. he helped me a lot in, in getting my hands and feet in this whole journey of mentalism. He helped me get into the magic scene. I met so many people because of him. And because of him, I got to meet and hang out with David Blaine two times. So no, yeah, is. I swear on my life, swear on my what? life the first time. Yeah, first time we hung out in Hamilton on his tour bus. Because of that guy, Bobby Mata, one of my best friends. Shout out I to Bobby to Mata for making it happen. Yeah, yeah that he, he, uh, he introduced me. We were on the tour bus. 45 minutes to an hour, I was on David Blaine's tour bus. I could not believe what was going on. Yeah. Did you yeah. ask him any questions? No, because I know, like, I just, we talked, like, I was like, dude, honestly, Thank you. Thank you so much for letting me. He's like, no problem at all. And then he just paused and he's like, do you have one of my tour decks? And I said, no, I don't. And he's like, I'll be right back. And he just left. 
And then he came back and he brought me a deck and he signed. This is the deck. This is the deck that David Blaine gave me. And if you see a smudge, I will tell you the funny story. He was signing it. His finger smudged it. And then he wiped it off. And he's like, don't worry. And then he gave it to me. I'm not even, that's all he said. Don't worry. I was like, you know what? Did he re-sign cool it though? It. Did he re-sign it somewhere else or that was it? That was it. Oh, yeah, okay. He signed it. But I had another deck with me that I had of my own, which he signed. And he signed a poster too. I actually have the poster there. Uh, it says yeah. to Kevin. That is dope. Yeah. Now, when you open the deck of cards, is it? Oh, look regular at the front. Deck. That's dope. Yeah. That is so nice. Is it yeah. a regular deck of cards? Do you use a deck. deck of cards? No, honestly, th these I would never use because, like, this is genuinely a gift from David Blaine. Like, it's it's surreal to me. Uh, I'm not a fanboy. That's not the kind of guy I am, but it's just, remember how I started this story off at three years old. All I remember is a guy flying. I've been watching this guy since I was three and like he not only changed my life, but I guarantee you he's changed everybody's life that does magic. And he changed the art in itself. Guys like David Blaine, Chris Angel. I know Chris Angel gets a lot of hate and all, but these guys genuinely made magic cool. Like, yeah, they did. They yeah, did. there's so many guys that do that. Chris Ramsey, he's such a good performer. He makes magic cool. Like, then you get those guys. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Like yeah, that. Yeah. That's that's where yeah, people yeah. think magicians just wear top hats and pull rabbits yeah. out of the hat. Like when we have gatherings, I'll grab a deck of cards, two two tricks that I always nail, but they're mm -hmm. mind blowing. Like they're mind blowing tricks. And so I love it. And, you know, um, anytime there's shows on right now on Netflix, on YouTube, I'll, I'll binge watch. You know, the speed of hands and, and all these different techniques, you don't learn it overnight. It takes true. time. And you know what's so admiring, though, Kevin, is like you just said at a young age, you know, this was introduced by your father. Um, and that's how things just started, right? But what's so fascinating is the fact that I spent so much time reading. Look, reading all day, man. Still, I still read. Yeah, you know, I'm the kind of person when I love something, I give a thousand percent. So music is another huge passion of mine right here, right here wow. for, for life, for life. Wow. Yeah, I know. I, I noticed that you have you have friends in the music, you know, like biz that are on mm. the top up. And so I thought, yes, that man, Havana Heights, Johnny Hills, Marcel Mazuka is their videographer is a brilliant man. Lucas Sisto does all the album artwork. The, Shout out to the team. Yeah, now or never, those guys, unbelievable. If you watch the video, man, you'll like it too. This is an open space, Beyond the Views podcast. Thank you for everyone watching right now. Look, this is a space where that's how the journey rolls, man. The journey is going to go left, right, center, up, down. Life's back. not linear. Life is not linear. No, it's not. It's not. So go ahead. I reached out to him on Facebook. I said, hey, Spy, how are you doing, man? You know, if you, uh, I said, I, I'm a big fan of your work. I love your stuff. If you have a chance to reply, I'd like to ask you a few questions about uh, one of your, your products. And it was a hypnosis uh, course. And he's like, yeah, man, you know, he answered everything. Super nice guy. Super nice. And he, a few months later, he's like, hey, I'm in Toronto. You're from Toronto. You want to come see my show? I'm like, yeah, why not? Yeah. From there, we became friends. And he said to me, he's like, you are one of few people. And in a YouTube video, he brought me on and he said this. So anybody that thinks, He's lying. I'm not. He came out of his own mouth. Yeah, he said, you are one of very few people that went from being a fan to being a friend. And he said, the reason for that is you have respect. And a lot of people don't. People message saying, yo, give me this. Give me that. I'm not like that. I never will be like that. I, I, I'm I, one person that believes in the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. I'm 100% like that. So, yeah. So, you know, he uh, became friends from there. And he's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to send you the, uh, I'm going to send you this course. I'm going to send you this uh, DVD set and that boom, I, I devoured it and by far really, really helped me do hypnosis. And now I know how to do hypnosis. I'm still learning. I always message him about different books to get. Uh, my girlfriend just bought me a book encyclopedia of stage hypnotism just to learn. Obviously right now, hypnotism is not something that we can do, but once everything goes back to normal, then I can get into that as well. So yeah, hypnosis is, is is amazing. It's it's so cool. Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Every time I seen any episodes with people being hypnotized by these magicians, and I just fucking never believe that shit, man. <laughs> After your brain is is 
and other lack of a better term out of it. And then the other half is, is, is alert. And so I don't know if this is a secret, a magician secret, or if it's something. No, 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 no. I Hypnosis think maybe, is, is, yeah. 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 Hypnotherapy. People do that. It's just conscious and subconscious mind right now, as we speak, the conscious mind's at the forefront, essentially hypnosis is to bring the subconscious mind to the forefront of the, fo of the conscious mind to the, to the back. So that's essentially that. And, and with hypnosis, a big thing is you cannot do something that you don't want to do. That's impossible. It's, it's not real. You can't get stuck in hypnosis. Um, there's so much to that where people are like, I got stuck. No. Yeah. I get stuck. It's, you get out of it whenever you want. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really about how much do you want to do? It's, you're not going to do something you don't want to do. One yeah. and two, it, it, like uh, depending, I don't know. There's maybe people on YouTube, like everything where would say, Hey, just, just play along, just fake it. But depending yeah. on who you saw, I don't know if you remember the hypnotists, who you saw, if, if they're like renowned and they're known. No, random, random magicians on YouTube. Even just before it we- could be, honestly, they could be real too. Genuine, I like, I, I really believe they would be so I don't think someone me, will go out of their way. Okay, so you're telling me you've done it before and, it, and it's- Yes. Yeah, to, uh, to Carlo from ha Havana Heights from Now or Never. I did it for him. I did it to my girlfriend's brothers, three, three of his friends. Uh, my girlfriend's brother's friends, I did it for them, three of them. When we do our part two, part two of Beyond the Views podcast with Kevin, uh, we're going to have to show everyone if this is what it is. Have you ever had anybody that freaked out about it? Like you did it, they freaked out or- Like them personally? Yeah. No, no. Uh, the people watching are like, oh my God, oh my God, what the hell? But them, like one of my friends, when I made him forget the number three, uh, my, one of my girlfriend's brother's friends, he woke up saying- no, he, he didn't do that. That's not like, I didn't forget the number three. And, and he was like, no, it's on video. He's like, no, you guys are messing with me. He saw, he's like, yo, that's Kevin and his black magic. He's like, what the hell am I? But no, it's not black magic. It just, it's, it's hypnosis. It's, it's real. It's as real as it gets. It's uh, in my opinion, it is the realest, realest form. I don't want to say of magic. Cause it's not really magic. Hypnosis is its own thing, but it's, it's, it's the realest thing you can do. Cause it's real. It's, there's no tricks hypnosis is real like it, i don't know what else to say in that regard really? it, it, yeah it's real that is so fucking cool it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of work because you need to be able to deliver it right you need to be able to do it you need to be able to guide the person i've spent a, a hard long time working on something that's one, very entertaining two mind-blowing and three interactive because that's something i you know over video chat with so many people, it's so hard to interact with so many people, keep them all entertained at once. So that's something I tried my best to write is, is a show that's going to do that. Um, yeah. so the more I do it, the more we learn. Everything is a learning experience in life. Of course, of course. But I will say, you know, I left out one name, a very important name of someone in my life, other than my family and other than my girlfriend. My girlfriend's a very big in, uh, help. She's always yeah. there to help. You got to have that support system. My girlfriend and her family support me so much, like so, 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 so much. They're my family too, obviously. That's exactly what I said. Once things go back to normal, I can't wait to grab my camera and go on these roads and have podcast conversations with the most random people on the roads. Oh yeah. And get her done. And, you know, I just can't wait for all that kind of good stuff. Cause that's just going to be so amazing. You know what I mean? Like just random people, even for yourself too, going, going downtown Toronto, doing magic tricks you have all your boys there you know recording you filming you ah oh, it's gonna be the life we'll see yeah how it's gonna take. yeah the role model magician that inspired you to get started or that you've watched and that you're still a fan of ah oh, it's hard david blaine 100 100 but chris angel too because that show it was just fire like it's so ahead of its time and in, in 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 terms of like the ideas they went so outside and what they would do and as a kid watching that it made me think big but again i gotta say like david blaine chris Angel, like it's so hard to pick one because then what was the when difference I go the what was the difference between them two chris angel did more stage magic on the street he took what you would see on stage and put it to the street. And David Blaine was more organic. And that's why both I, are so important. And that's magician that inspired me. 
one mentalist that really, 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 really inspired me, other than my friends, Bobby Mata, Ryan Edwards, Spidey, one mentalist that really inspired me and I think changed the mentalism game was Darren Brown from England. I still watch him. I still wow. say he is, wow. in terms of entertainment that's out there, he's one of the best, if not the best. Like, I think everyone that watches him perform will know it. Even performers, other magicians, other mentalists. There's a reason that not only people that aren't magicians like his stuff, magicians watch and say, wow. Really? I'm going to have to take good. him in tonight. When David Blaine, I don't know if you could even answer this, but when David Blaine went underwater for fucking so long, is that some real shit? Real, 100% real. If you watch his special on it, there's so much that he talks about in that. It's all real. There's certain limits he, that you're not going to go, Kev. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe in the future that might change. But right now in, in my career, my journey, I it's, that's not something that I want to do. But... Yes, what he did was 100% real. And, you know, he teaches, he not, I don't want to say teaches, but he brought two celebrities or a few celebrities in one of his YouTube videos. Um, it was for his, you know, his stunt where he was up in the air because yeah. you got to regulate your breathing and your oxygen levels. He was teaching techniques on how to hold your breath longer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check that out, maybe put a link here if people want to see yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and they did genuinely succeed. They were able to raise the length of time that they were able to cool. hold their breath. It was fantastic. That is so cool. You can answer this being specific to your magic tricks, or you can answer this for another magician. What's like the, the, the hardest, the most difficult magic trick a magician can perform? Well, the reason I'm going to say anything with sleight of hand and, and leave it like that is because when you're doing something that revolves sleight of hand, right? Your, your brain needs to be focusing on the, the move. Mm. You need to be able to perform well and entertain because you can have these amazing performers. I, not, I don't want to say perform, amazing um, magicians at skill yeah. that can't perform. But then you have those magicians that are unbelievable at skill and can perform. And that, that is the hardest thing because when your mind is focused on the slights, but you're still entertaining, you're still engaging, you still can perform and present, that to me is the hardest thing because yeah. it's very easy to not be entertaining. It's very easy to like do right, it, so take the card and, that, yeah. and, and not like, yeah, that, like yeah. you can have somebody that's unbelievable at visual stuff and unbelievable at sleight of hand and all that, but if you don't have that presentation there too, and that's why I say that's the hardest thing. I think the hardest thing is being yeah. able to combine everything and be a good performer. I think that's the hardest thing. People's attention spans aren't always there, right? And you got to make sure you don't lose people. It's very easy to lose somebody. It's hard to keep people's attention. Look, you did the Rubik's cube. I think on Havana it was. Where he solved it behind his back. He solved it behind his back by himself. He gave it to you and it was solved. I'm going to have to put that clip. That's his funny. reaction. His, he, in his head, he, I, I still don't know what was going on in his mind. He's probably thinking, how the hell did this just, how did I do this? It was all him. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I rewatched that four, five, six, seven times. I just couldn't put the two and two together. I just can't wait. I can't wait to be one on one with you to, to see all this live. Oh, oh my god! god. No. no, come on, man. Uh, Yo. <laughs> you're actually, you're crazy. Yo, you're crazy, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, about you. Yo, that's the first time you're ever going to do that, fam. Jeez. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what kind of shows do you like performing most? Mentalism. 100% uh, mentalism. Uh, I, I, you know, for me, magic, as I said, that's how I started. That's how I think a lot of guys started. But why is mentalism the thing for me? I'm a people person. I love talking to people. I love interacting with people. And good magic can do that. But I, in me, I did not have that ability to perform magic. And when I say perform, I don't mean doing it. I mean perform, like present it well. I... I feel just the way I speak, the way I am, mentalism allowed me to connect with people better. And it's something that I, I, I'm more passionate about, not just because of that, just 
in my head, the brain, brain processes, everything about that is something that intrigues me more than yeah. sleight of hand. To me, I always believe that, you know, I can woo your eyes and people will freak out. But when you, you get inside someone's head, it's something else. Like at That's the end of the day, when you see a magic trick with sleight of hand, you will be floored. Like, holy crap, this is great. But if you have the slightest edge that this is sleight of hand, there's some people, not you, that will dismiss it as, oh, that's just sleight of hand. Meanwhile, it's the hardest thing to do. I have utmost respect for those unbelievable really? people at sleight of hand. Unbelievable. Shin Lim, fantastic. That guy's in animal. Everybody knows him. He's an animal. Mm -hmm. Fantas His thoughts on the theatrics of magic. He is someone that can present and perform magic amazingly. For me, mentalism is that for me because I don't want to say I'm here. I can perform it amazingly. I, I'm not one to talk myself up at all. I'd rather have people, you tell me what you think, sure. see how you feel about me. But for me and how I am and I interact with people, I feel like I'm better at interacting with people with mentalism than with magic. Well, because like, you're a people's person, you're sociable. and uh, I just love getting in people's head. Like it, it, figuratively, it's not real. Like I'm not really in their head, but to them, I love when they think that I'm in their head. It's just the reaction that they have. <laughs> Again, I don't do it for the reaction. Like, oh, I'm only performing just to make you look at me. I'm, I'm a god. I'm not. It's an illusion. I do it because that, that reaction shows the feeling that you're going, you're having, the feeling that you're thinking, that, that, that feeling, that's what I'm after. I want to give people that's that feeling. Thing. I want to make people, you know, when I entertain you, all the problems, any issues you have in your life to be not in existence in your mind in that moment. When I do something for someone, I want them to feel as though there's nothing wrong, no issues, everything's good. Yeah. Give people happiness. I want to give people a distraction from, you know, life. So go, 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 yeah. especially all this COVID. Yeah. It's so stressful. Yeah. It's so sure. negative. Doing this stuff allows me to, to feel like I'm giving people positivity in their life. That's amazing. Well said. You watch other magicians. Do you sit there and enjoy their performances? It depends on who the magician is. Um, a lot of the times now, just because how much I've learned and, and studied, it's very hard for me to get fooled now. It's oh, very hard oh, for me. Next question. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's like now I watch it more for the other side of it, the presentation, like, oh, that was nice what he did with it. The scripting, the story, everything about that is what I focus on now, because genuinely it's like, I, I feel like, like when I see something that fools me now, I can bet you probably fooled 90% of magicians. Like it's, it has to be crazy. Cause I, again, I read every single day and, and, and my friends in the industry, like Ryan, if you were to ask me, you'd say that kid reads a lot. Like I am reading all the time. I'm studying this all the time because I love it, but yeah. And so now when I watch, be the number one magician in the world, right? Uh -huh, I hope. I hope. <laughs> Back from a commercial break, Beyond the uh -huh. Podcast. I am here with Kevin, the number one magician in the world. Kevin, what's the quote? So Spidey is the one that shared this quote to me. Of course, this is happening inside your head, Harry. But why on earth should that mean that is not real? Mm. And that's something. That's something really there. It's Spidey. That's all Spidey. Spidey was the one that told me, and that really, like, now it's stuck with me. I'm not even joking. I always think about that. Because it's true, just because it's happening in our head, that, that, how can that mean that it's not real, right? Why should that mean exactly. that it's not real? Exactly. So everything's as real as we want it to be, right? Everything's real as we believe it to be. But obviously, read, like what I'm doing, mentalism, it's not real to read minds. If I could read minds, would I be talking about playing cards? No, I'd be playing the lottery. Yeah, no, for sure. Or maybe Kevin. I'm messing with you and everything is real. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kevin, where do you see where do you see the future for all magicians? I see it's very bright, genuinely. I like magicians that are passionate for it and that are good at what they do. I think magic is something that is getting more and more and more and more popular by the second. Like people but don't you feel like they take a little dip for a little while? In terms of popularity? Yeah, popularity. I don't I, I genuinely I don't think so. I don't think no. so. I think as long as people as long as people are always trying to improve and 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 take it to the next step and do new things, I think pe people are always going to love it. There's always going to be people that want to see magic. As you said from when we started, who doesn't love magic, right? Oh, after so many years of magic 
can there really be new tricks? Of course. I know it's, it's, it's hard when you think of it. So much has been done, but there's so much that can still be done. There's so many new things, so many crazy things. Justin Willman, that, that show really, really opened up so much. Like that is a brilliant show. Brilliant. I loved it. I, I loved it. I think everybody would love it. It's something that appeals to so many people. Do you spend time trying to figure out maybe a magic trick that you can come up with? Always. Every day. And Every single day. And have you? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. That is Kevin's. That is Kevin's. No one knows it. No one knows how you did it. I've, I've told some magicians how I've done it. But yeah, it's something I, I worked on. A few things. I have so many things I'm always working on that's original to me. Uh, one thing in specific, I was working on it for four years and I'm still working on it to make it better. Wow. And I showed it to some magicians when I first, in its beginning stages. And one, uh, he was a performer, he was always performing. He was completely fooled. He's like, dude, this this is fantastic. He's like, I have no idea how you just did this. Original, Kevin's original. Movie. Kevin's original, yeah. But my mom came and she saw all the people that came. Remember, it was a very small venue. I was not expecting a lot of people. I was just doing this you know, exposure, fun experience. I love the Mills Tap House. I think they're amazing. I wanted to work with them, bring people in there as well. So I was not expecting so many people. It was, and I'm not, again, I remember I said this the whole time, I'm not talking up my ass. It was, there were so many people there that some people had to leave because there was no room for wow. them. And I, I felt like, I was like, holy shit for me. What the hell is this? Is so this cool. is crazy. So then my mom, and my dad were there. Again, remember I said my dad was okay with it. My mom watched me perform. And it was that moment where they watched me perform. Then my mom, and then she saw the gigs obviously coming after that. She was like, I, she, I got the blessing. She's like, you can do it. It took for her to see me perform live. And she was like, wow, I can feel your passion. Everybody says that when I perform, they feel my passion because That's beautiful. Yeah, I no. love it. I can see the passion through the way you speak. Um, and you know when I knew this was for you, Kevin? Here, now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm, look, I, okay, let's just say I was at a restaurant eating with a group of people and there was a gentleman walking around, tape, walking around to tables showing the magic tricks. And I overheard guests, oh my God, oh my God. Everyone was, you know, excited screaming and i looked over and i was like what's going on here like a random guys going to random tables doing magic tricks whatever let's continue you know let's continue eating let's continue drinking kevin came to our table and i was like oh okay what's going on and he came he introduced himself i remember you had the black leather jacket on that's 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 what i wear all the time man one of the tricks that i remember it was uh you asked for it could have been my phone but somebody else's phone but you pretty much figured out their passcode to their phone. <laughs> and everyone started going crazy, like, who is this? Who is this? Anyways, that day, we, uh, your vibes was amazing. Thank you. Your aura, the way you presented yourself, everything about it was fun. You made it fun. You're going to win. You're going to win. All right. So before we start getting into a little bit of some cool shit that you wanted to do, Let's let the people know really quickly what is coming next for Kevin right now. Where can people find you? Anything that we can let the people know uh, so that they can, you know, check out your work because it's awesome. Yeah, you can check me out on Instagram at Kevin Hamdan. Obviously, I you know, Cito, you're going to add it in. Yeah. My YouTube, Kevin Hamdan. Uh, more videos are going to be coming out on that. You can even check out my website, www.kevinhamdan.com. And yeah, soon I will most likely be doing a... Because right now I've been just doing private Zoom shows for for companies or or people, but I'm thinking very soon I'm gonna do a Zoom show for the public by ticket. So we put tickets out, Good. buy a ticket, put it on, and it's a Zoom link. You'll get it. You come in, and I will use you in the show. You will be a part of the show. That's something I, as I said, that's before, awesome. You hear I, that, people? I, I'm working. Yeah, I'm gonna be there, and I'm gonna make sure that I promote that on my page too. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what, you know, you were talking about since then you've known I was a good person. Same with you, man. The second he asked me, do you want to be in my podcast before you even had it out? Thank you. I know. I said, yes. 
I, I didn't even know what you were doing with the podcast. Well, I said you. yes. Why? Because you're a good man. You're I an amazing that. person. I appreciate that so much. There was already at least 10 to 15 people that I had in mind. And you're one of them. You're top Thank 10. you. Thank you so top much. 10, top 10, top 10. Thank you. So before we close off the Beyond the Views podcast, here with Kevin, episode seven. Jeez. Jeez. How many things do you want to see? Do you want to give the viewers a little taste? A little bit more? A lot. Give them whatever you want to give them. Whatever you want to give Let them. Me, do you have a deck of cards at home? Okay, let me shuffle. Let me shuffle. Let me shuffle. Perfect. And look, I'm going to take the cards as well. And I'm going to go underneath the table. And I'm going to shuffle these as well. And let's do this. I want you to go underneath the table. And I want you to turn over one card face down without looking. So hold the cards face down. Turn over one card the other way without looking. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to put the cards inside the box. Okay, so I have one face up. I'm not even looking at it. Yeah. Good. Now take the deck away and show the camera the card that you have the other way. Yeah. They're going to see the card though. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's perfect. All, all that was is that you went underneath the table and you turned over one at random. I, yeah, I didn't see it. I still don't even know what yeah. it is. And genuinely, we didn't set this up. I didn't tell you off camera, make sure you turn over this. This is random. Is that the one that's face up? Yeah. Three of clubs. I want you to see something, Sito. No, don't, don't mind that quality. Don't mind that quality. This has been through a lot. No, no, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sito, look, I want you to see inside the deck. I'm left-handed, but all the cards are face up. Yes? Yes, you can yes. see that all the cards are face up, it's except like the one card. Yes? Look, I want you to see this. You could have turned over any one. I turned over one as well. So again, keep the keep the card in view, the one that you turned over. No, that's crazy. That's what I'm trying to say. Your magic is so fucking real. What? But I know a lot. Yeah, of you know what's crazy? Are... I could have picked any card. Like that's crazy, man. You could have turned so over crazy. any single card. You did that. You turned over the same one I turned over. That was all you. Okay, you gotta give you gotta give us another one. But you, this is the things I, I, I know everyone watching right now. I can't process this. Man. <laughs> it was all you. But I know everyone watching right now. They're thinking, mentalist. That's a card trick. Why don't we take this to another level? Okay, Russian roulette. Or there's one bullet in the in the gun. Yeah. Shoot it give it to different people and then not get shot essentially we're not doing that so don't worry i don't i don't have a gun none of that stuff but that it was a game that was played which tested pretty much life or death we're going to play that same game it's not going to test life or death but it's going to test my career essentially it's going to put my career on the line so i told you i'm a musician my hands mean a lot to me okay and i'm going to show you right now what we're going to do let's move this I have a table right here with mm. four bags. Mm. And we have one spike. You see that? And this is a genuinely real spike. You could see that. Yes, that's 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 a sharp spike right there. If oh that were to go HD HD too. That would damage me, right? We're gonna put the bag, the, the spike in one of the bags, and then I'm gonna mix them up in a moment, okay? Yep. Oh, buddy, don't do that. And look, you can hear the wood right in there. Is anywhere you say uh, stop, I'm gonna smash them, okay? So the reason I want to do that is because I'm not telling you it was there. I just want you to know how we're doing it, right? So again, I'm not telling you that it was there. All I'm saying is, wherever I stop, wherever you say stop, I'm gonna smash, okay? So you have to feel where it's not. That's, that's what, sorry, I left out. Wherever you want. Stop. Here. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Risky boy. Sito, Sito, we got to keep doing it. 
Tell me when to stop. That's risky, boy. Stop. Ooh. I didn't even give you a chance there. Holy. 50-50, Cito, just know. The more I smash them, the higher chance I can hit. Now this is 50-50. One or two, which one do you feel I should smash? Number one or number two? Number two, number two. Smash this one? Number two, number two. Are you sure? Are you sure? Listen, man. It's up to you. Do you want this one or that one? I don't want you to feel like I'm influencing you. This is the one? My palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. Yeah, number two, number two. You did it. You <laughs> have completely. That's fire. That is you so. You saved fire. my hand right there. I want you to see. Let's bring this right into the camera. That is the solid spike. You just saved my hand. Kevin, congrats. That is. Dude. You would have nailed your hand there. I would have had to come drag you to the hospital. At, if you didn't say number like, two and you said number one, this would have been right like through my head. 2 a.m. in the morning. Oh, man. You know what? This is so much fun. I, I, wasn't, I was just going to stop there. I want to show you one last one. How's that sound? One last one. Please. Please. Okay. Do you have an email? Yeah. What is your email? I'm going to email you a picture right now. Do not open it. Just once you get to the email, you have an iPhone, right? Do you use the mail app or Gmail? Uh, Gmail. Gmail. Okay. So once you get the email, open the Gmail, just don't open the mail and show the camera that you did indeed receive an email from me. Just don't open the email. Okay. Okay. Beyond the views pod at gmail.com. Yeah. Open the app, but don't open the email. Okay. Now show the camera that you did get an email. Just don't open the email because then you're going to spoil the secret. Perfect. Close the app. Now close it completely. Fun for you. We're going to go on a dream date and I'm going to keep a log of everything right here on my notes app. Imagine the globe spinning and you're going to land on one spot. Where are we landing? The Italy. 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 Now, it's a dream day with any celebrities. Just for fun, which celebrity do you want to go with? Which celebrity are you taking to Italy on this dream date? What celebrity am I taking on this dream date? I am looking at my TV and I see Maluma and Jennifer Lopez. So let's go with Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. So we're going to write Jennifer Lopez. Right? Just keeping a, a log of everything that you say. Italy, Jennifer Lopez. What restaurant are you going to in Italy? Any restaurant. Not like McDonald's. She's not going to like McDonald's, but what restaurant? What do you want to call it? Uh, let's call it the Meatball Factory. Meatball Factory. Interesting. That might actually exist. <laughs> meatball Factory. Okay. What are you guys ordering? Spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti. Okay. Good. And how much is this going to cost to the penny? Are we drinking wine or just, just the food? Up to you. Whatever you want. It's you and JLo. What are you doing? We're having some wine. We're in Italy. We're having some wine. We're having some, some delicious red wine. Some Pinot Noir. So let's say everything's going to cost $60. On the dot, 60 bucks on the dot. Yeah. Or $60.10 or $59.70 or 60. So just 60 on the dot. 60 on the dot. See, I'm smiling for a reason. And look, $60. And we're just going to keep this here genuinely to uh, see everything. Th those are the thoughts. We did this genuinely to keep track. Italy. Everything that you said, Jennifer Lopez, spaghetti and meatballs, factory, meatball factory, $60. Spaghetti, some wine, Pinot Noir. The reason, yes, the reason I'm going to tell you, I sent you an email was because one, I did not want you to think this could be altered. 
I didn't want somebody watching this thinking, oh, he could have just done this or that. It was sent to you by email. And you know, you can attest to this. When you send an email, you can't change it. It can't be changed. Once an email is sent, you can't edit it. And number two, I sent you a screenshot of a note I made to myself in my notes app yesterday. And the reason I sent it as a screenshot image is because you know, once you take a picture, you can't change it other than Photoshop's, but I emailed it to you. You can't change a picture and you can't change an email. This is all sent to you. Can you unlock your phone right now and just tell everybody the, the time? Because again, they don't see the time, but what was the time that I sent it? 1.50 a.m. And what time is it now? Right now it is 1.57 a.m. Open the email right now and read the first sentence. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Show the camera. <laughs> what, what do you see? What do you see? What did I email you? <laughs> Oh man, that's crazy. A sense that tonight there will be a dream date in Italy. The dinner will be with Jennifer Lopez at Meatball Factory. You both order spaghetti and meatballs and it costs $60. Thank you for... And show everyone, because everybody's probably thinking right now, you're just playing along. Your reaction says it. That that's, that, yeah. That's crazy. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right there. And show them the time as well so that people can see that it was genuinely sent at 1.50 a.m. Okay, perfect. And then there's a the time. How did you know, Sito? How did you know that that was the dream date that I had in my mind? That was all you. That's the craziest shit I've ever seen. It's the craziest shit I've ever seen because what if I did change the number from 60 to 16, 10 cents? <laughs> Pretty creeped out. Um, yeah. You are a legend in the making. Beyond the Views podcast, episode seven with Kevin, the number one magician in the world. Best believe that. Hey, Kev, on the side note, um, can't wait to drop this. Enjoy. Thank you, man. I can't wait. That's really fucked up. That's the most fucked up thing I've ever seen.